All right, well today we're going to take a tour of Omics ADA's 1942 uh, Willys MB. Uh, this is a flat fender Jeep. This is a World War II Jeep. This is one of the first ones uh, to make Jeeps standard. All right. Uh, the way you can tell if this is an MB uh, or a GPW, which is a Ford version, uh, some of the main characteristics of an MB are it's got nine slots in the grill. Okay, it's going to have recessed headlights, and we'll show you that in a few minutes. Why is that? It'll have this flat and then round for the blackout lights. Uh, you have your standard uh, Willys round tubular front uh, cross member. Dana 25, uh, and the special thing about this Dana 25 is all the steering is connected is actually connected right to the uh, the housing of the axle. So that is something that's very uh, specific right to the MBs and the GPWs. So that is something. If you have a regular Dana 25, it's not going to work with this vehicle. Uh, it does have a T84 okay, uh, transmission with a Dana 18 two-speed tra uh, transfer case. Uh, the rear end in this is a uh, Dana 23-2 rear end. Uh, it is a full floating axle, whereas when you get past them, they turn into a semi-floating uh, rear end. So that is something to look for. Okay, well, let's look at this motor. This is the 134 four-cylinder Go Devil motor. This is made by Willys Overland. Uh, uh, here you go. There it is. This is an L-head motor. Uh, the top of it's flat with the spark plugs in the top. Uh, some of the things about this motor are the exhaust intake manifold are on the driver's side. Uh, you're going to have a W.O. Carter carburetor uh, that is fed with air through this oil bath. And what the oil bath is going to be is a little bit of oil in the bottom with all this uh, metal mesh inside there that's going to pull air through the back of it and the oil will create it so uh, like a dirt catch. It'll stick right to it. Uh, here's going to be okay, so this is your oil filter. You clean that periodically. You got your water pump. Uh, your fuel pump's down here. Uh, it has a little bracket for a oil pump. You got your horn. Your electrics and everything is going to be right here. Uh, one of the coolest things about these vehicles are these uh, lights right here. They, they're made so that when you're out in the field that you can take that little bracket off and you can flip these up. That way you can, you can pivot these. I have to loosen it, but you can pivot these so you can work in the motor, uh, have light all around you and things of that nature. Uh, this is the only vehicle as far as the Jeeps, uh, the World War II Jeeps only have these. After that, the civilian Jeeps, they, they lose that all together and they have a big nine inch round uh, light. It is a six volt uh, electrical system. Uh, you can see the battery is contained right here. This is going to be where your fuel uh, filter and everything is, your voltage regulator. Your starter is going to be down there and your generator and distributor are on this side. Uh, you can see on the hood that is a, is a two piece kind of hood where it's two metal sheets seam together right here. It's a fairly flimsy hood. Okay, when you're in the field and you're trying to figure out, you know, if you have what you think you have, you can look, uh, see where those bolts are. Okay, so those are drilled marks. If you're going to have those on there, you can tell that it's an MB hood because the two on the side are these four right here, and these two right here are actually where the windshield will be held down. So that'll help you understand whether or not you have a, a two A hood or a, an MB uh, hood. So that's the motor. Okay, let's see. Uh, the windshield on the MBs, uh, they're a two-piece windshield. And what they're made to do is actually they will pivot out so that you can have access to the outside um, with the air or you can shoot through them or whatever it is you got to do. Uh, it has windshield wipers. These are hand windshield wipers. That means they're manual. There's no vacuum hoses or electric or anything like that for a long time. Uh, you can see the size of the cowl, or not the cowl, but the windshield base is about you know, six, seven inches. Um, that is one thing to look for. The tubular construction on this uh, windshield frame is round with a thumb bolt, and what it's going to do is actually you loosen this and you unhook it from the inside, and then the whole thing will pivot down. And the front of it's going to lay right here. You'll take this bracket and hook it to the windshield itself to hold it down so that you can use it for a gurney or just to have the wind in your face, whatever you need uh, to have. Okay, so uh, another thing about this windshield is uh, the slide mechanism is like this, okay? Uh, later on uh, with the Jeeps, it's going to be like a lollipop style. This is what the early style looks like, so that is something to be aware of when you're, when you're looking at these vehicles. Uh, it has the grab handles, 
all the way around. In case you get stuck, then people can literally pick this vehicle up and move it. Uh, your exhaust is going to come outside of the passenger side uh, part of the body. Uh, we can walk around. You can see you got the nice canvas top. Uh, it doesn't have sides or anything like that. All that kind of stuff can be put on. Uh, these buttons right here are for a door to be put on, so that's something that you can add to it uh, if need be. This is for your safety and protection, so that is something to look for. Uh, this uh, screw right here is something to look for also as well when you're looking on the dash and things of that nature for uh, to see what this vehicle is. Uh, the wheels on this vehicle are split rimmed wheels where these are bolts and you'd unhook them and then the wheel will actually come into two pieces where that when you're in the field you can put one down, put your, your tire and your uh, tube inside of it and put the other side down and actually put it together without having any uh, machine help so to speak so uh, people can actually do that. Uh, you got your bows and everything for the vehicle which will actually lay down on here. You got your secondary handles on the sides, reflectors. The rear tire is mounted on the back of this vehicle. Uh, these uh, MBs do not have tailgates. What they actually have is just a solid piece that goes across the back of it. So if it has a tailgate that has probably been handmade or it's not original to the vehicle. Uh, it does have bumperettes on it. All right, so one of the cooler things about this vehicle is this isn't actually a 42, and this is an early 42. Uh, so the way you can tell that is it's a script Jeep. And what a script Jeep is, it's going to have Boss logo of Willys or Ford right here. Uh, a lot of the earlier stuff before the military said that you weren't allowed to stamp things and uh, essentially claim them as your own by stamping them with a W or an F. They outlawed that essentially after uh, 1942. Uh, it does come with a pinnel hook. That's right there. The bumper on the rear of it, this is one thing that changed. Okay, so it goes to this line right here and the bumper will actually meet. Later on versions of the military and the civilian Jeeps, this is actually going to extend and it'll have a little bump right here where you can see where it goes out. So that is one thing you can look at for the bumper. It is a different style bumper. Okay. Okay. Uh, an easy way to tell whether this is an MB or a GPW is uh, this toolbox back here. Uh, you can see how this is a circle right here and when you push the button it will unlock and allow this door to open you'd have little tool spaces on both sides. Uh, the door itself is one of the giveaways. See how it's all nice and flat? This is an MB uh, so the wheelies made them really flat like this. The GPW is actually embossed and it has a, a little line that goes around. I'll show you in a, in a little bit on a different vehicle. But that's a way to tell whether it's an MB or GPW. It does have a rear seat. It's held in place by these hooks. Uh, the seats themselves are actually kind of low as far as where the back goes. Uh, they're metal frame construction with uh, canvas uh, applied to them with uh, screws and whatnot. So they're not the most comfortable seats, but they do work. Um, all right, so we're on the left side or driver's side of the vehicle. Uh, this is one of the biggest giveaways for an MB or GPW. Uh, they're going to have these Pioneer tools. Okay, so what they did is they made an indention for the tools to sit. This is an axe. It's going to have a little sheath right here that's actually part of the tub that you will uh, push up in there and it sits on this bracket right here and then it's held down by these straps. The shovel is the same kind of thing. It has a, a shovel nose bracket for right here. Uh, you can see where it's held down. Uh, once again, it's got the grab handles right here. The fuel tank on this is a 13 and a half gallon fuel tank that's going to sit lower than the tub itself. Uh, one of the interesting things about the fuel in the MBs and GPWs uh, is this right here. So you would actually lift the seat up and apply your fuel here instead of doing it in the sides like the later CJs and military versions of these vehicles. And this is where your mirror is going to be located. Uh, whenever you look around, you can look for any of these bolt holes to see whether or not it is actually supposed to be there or not. Okay. Okay, let's, let's get in this bad boy and check it out. Oh, yeah, it's definitely made for smaller people. All right, well, this is the inside of the MB. Uh, it's pretty standard as far as what you're going to have. You're going to have your gauges, your fuel, your oil pressure, your temperature, and your amps, and along with your speedometer here. Uh, it does have your panel lights, it's going to give your lights for your blackout equipment and things of that nature. Uh, these two lights will make it so you can see because these do not have bulbs inside of them. Uh, this is where your parking brake is going to be. Your data plates will be on your dash or on your glove compartment. It does have a glove compartment. Okay, so it's pretty standard as far as foot pedaling. Okay, so it's the clutch, brake, and your fuel pedal. Uh, these are actually metal, they're all cast, so it's an arm with a pedal on top of it or is what it is. But what it actually would be is you would turn a switch and you would push this button right here and this button would start the motor so you wouldn't have to run around with the key in case someone was running after you with a gun, you could just jump in and, and go. 
Uh, some of those stuff on the inside of it, you can see the, uh, the locks for the windshield. You'd pull these up and your windshield will be able to uh, go down forward. Uh, this is where you're gonna push your windshield, it's gonna go out. Uh, these are your hand wipers. That's what you're gonna have to do uh, to keep the thing going. Okay. All right, so this is your transmission. This is a T84 transmission. The transmission itself is actually fairly small. It's uh, about the same size as a T90, except for the top of the transmission is flat. When you get to the T90, it raises up about an inch and a half, give or take. Uh, so that, that is a difference between this whole tub compared to all the rest of the Jeeps. So that is something to keep in consideration when you're looking to find one of these Jeeps, whether or not you have a T84 transmission, because it will be the only one that will fit in this vehicle without doing any major modification to the tub. Uh, the transfer case is uh, Dana 18. Uh, these little arms are standard for the MBs and GPWs and the early 2As, the height of them. They're going to change and get a little bit longer as uh, the years go on. But it's pretty standard. It's uh, up is out of four-wheel drive, down is in four-wheel drive, uh, low range is all the way up, and high range is all the way down. Now, only having 60 horsepower, uh, this doesn't have a lot of speed to it, so the power is the main get you there, anywhere, get you out, any day, something. <laughs> the interior, as far as that functionality goes, uh, the seats in these vehicles, uh, this passenger does pivot. Uh, it does not have, it's all flat down here, it does not have a toolbox like the later uh, CJ version models of the Jeeps. Uh, so the seat you can see is, is a metal seat with cushions added to it. Uh, same thing with the rear seat, it is just a metal seat with cushions added to it. No, oh, it's locked up so I can't move it. Uh, right here, uh, these are going to be your footsteps or foot braces for anybody that's in the, the back of it. Uh, this is where your shocks are going to be, so this is part of it. Okay, so one of the best things about this vehicle is this right here. This is where your machine gun is going to mount, okay? Uh, that's why this is bowed out like this in order for this plate that's under here. See these, where these holes are going to go? This is where your mount for your 30 caliber machine gun will go. Uh, when you get into uh, looking at the difference between an MB and a GPW, uh, this plate right here that is under on the actual frame uh, is different. The Ford is more of a square frame, whereas the MB is more of a round uh, plate that you're going to hook it to. So that is another uh, identification difference between the two models. Everything else, for the most part, is about the same. All right. I hope you enjoyed your tour of Omics ADA's 1942 Willys MB Script Jeep. Uh, for Kaiser Willys and Jeep Hunters Field Guide, my name's Jonah.